Mr. K, Desiree Chukadoz, for those who are online, we've got a class in here, so um, I can see you on the side. If you guys can't hear me for some reason, just let me know. You can either put it in chat or you can unmute. If you have any questions, you put it in chat or unmute as well. Right, yeah. All right, so let me start out with, uh, and everybody here has different language um, levels, we're at different levels, but I know some of the people. I'm trying to go over the sounds and, and, uh, and everything. So I think that'll be good to refresh. We will get to what we um, are going to learn this module. So uh, we will go through quickly through the sounds. These are on Google Drive. Hopefully, copy them up for you. All right, so there's our Google Drive. You guys, you guys online who want to see what we're talking about, I have handouts here for everybody in the class. Um, this is what I went over today. I have to behind the internet, and this is also against the sounds and the alphabet. So we'll briefly go over. That's why it's got her name on it. When I have to teach to her, I keep her stuff in my uh, in my Google Drive. So it's easier for me to 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 reach. All right. So for those of you online, we're going to briefly go over the Muscogee uh, sounds. And like you see here, I put alphabet. But if you ever have um, Ohio Barnett's class, she does say the sounds. She doesn't like the word alphabet. But for those of us who went to school, you know, learning English first, we know it as an alphabet. But you know, like I said, this is the same thing in sounds. Let's go through it. A, G, G, E, E, B, E, A, E, D, 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 O, B, B, or B, or C, C. Okay, so that's our most code alphabet. You have the um, link to Google Drive. And these are uh, some of the things I know I went over earlier today. Um, <laughs> I went over earlier today, but we're, like I said, we're going to refresh because we have some new students. Hi, if you guys Hi. please sign in and grab you a, a little, um, the handouts are right there, so you guys will know what we're going over. So, right here, you see we have a short D, like an it, it. We have a long E, E. And these are some of the things that we get mixed up in speaking uh, Muscogee. I know I do. I know uh, even some of the speakers. So I give it the H sound, A. The O has the O. The R has either the C, like athlete, or C. The U has the U, and the V has the U. So those are some of the things that people get tripped up on. I know I even get the song. And these are some examples of things that I've heard and things that I've come across. And I know you guys want to make handouts for this one. Because, uh, like I said, I, this is uh, something I taught earlier today. Cheeky Chop, please. And this is how I learned it at College of Muscogee Nation. It has a flea, Cheeky Chop, please. And it's got the long E right here. That's how I learned it. And, like I said, I, 
I've learned it different ways. And this one is you need to chop this. You need to chop this. You've got the TH and the I, you need to chop this. And that's how I hear from speakers in the, in the, the spoken language program talking is Chi Chocolate. But I've heard Chi Chocolate, and that's how I learned it. And when I made the word of the day, I, made, I spoke of Chi Chocolate because that's how our speakers speak in the, in the hopefully. So I've heard, and I, I know I've said this before, but I wanted to show you guys the visual. Totally. Somebody use Po, totally. But there's no, for the O, it doesn't have the O symbol. So I heard somebody speaking, and of course, we were all in public, and I didn't say, hey, it's wrong. <laughs> I said, he, he said, totally. And uh, what I told my uh, class earlier today is I could hear behind my head on my shoulder saying, totally, totally. So I can hear our speakers, and, you know, speaking the correct way sometimes. It's there's the O doesn't have the O symbol. If you look up here, it's um O. It's the O the symbol. So when somebody says totally, you're like, okay, you're missing that. You're you're putting the English O in there, totally. So and this is the, the reason I, I wanted to go over this is because we're trying to capture the speaker sound the way they say it. And uh, it's totally. Yeah. And then just just doggy. It's got just doggy. But if you look at that U, it's ooh sound. So what I and this is what I did. This is the one I did. And I'm like just doggy, you know, like hey. And uh, it's got the ooh sound, just doggy. So the ooh is in there. Just doggy. Not just doggy, just doggy. And that's the difference between, you know, uh, that's one of the small differences between the speakers and those of us who are learning, but we're trying to capture that sound. And that's why Mahai Barnett goes over uh, the sounds. You can say Jasadi, people know what you're talking about, but to sound like a speaker, and sometimes sometimes I got caught up on it and they're saying, it's wrong. <laughs> and then Hulapi. Uh, Olapi, I heard somebody say Olapi. Because they use the, the O sound in English, which don't have, we see this right here. Um, but it's like the O. O, O, Lapi, O, Lapi. These are some of the things I just wanted to pass on to you why we uh, try to go back to our sounds and learning, the, you know, the, the sounds, the way that, um, that our speakers speak. All right, does anybody have any questions? I know, Christy, I know that you already heard this today. I've seen you in the class. But like I said, I'm just briefly going over this to refresh us because I know we've had two weeks to leave. And uh, if you guys have any questions, I would say just practice your sounds. And I know you guys heard of this before. You just like in a stop sign, you just put C, D, O, P. So, you know, if you're driving around, you see stops like, okay? Definitely. Okay. I'm sorry, what? I'm hungry. Oh. <laughs> you guys, nice there. You guys are welcome to go. I would say yeah. when it's like, that's one of the things um, that I told my class is Humbida. Humbis is Humbida. Humbis, I am hungry, or I am eating. So, you will hear a lot of references to food. Stajati is like a lot of equipment interaction. So you will hear a lot of my uh, examples of food. All right. And then if you're driving down the street, just practice your sound. Like Main Street. Me, ah, uh, a, niche. Just, you know, get into the Muscogee mindset. Get to doing Thinking about it every day. Just go out and say some of these, you know. Then you learn a word like street, you know, by that time of child. So we can, you know, so we were passing a street, you know, baby. You should in, in the car voice, you know. She's happy to know that. And so, you know, just any of the most goes words you guys learn, just use it every day or try to, you know, like I told uh, the class. 
sometimes there's a word that gets stuck in your head, and then you're like, what the heck am I saying? What the heck am I thinking? And I know you guys know what Jen was. That was stuck in my head for a while. And uh, that means saw. So I was like, oh, Jen Wa, Jen Wa, why do I keep saying that? So they get stuck in your head. Do you have a question? Oh, that was going to come here. Oh, I'm good. Are you here? Yeah, I'm not going to this right now. So, like I said, we're talking about the Muskogee sounds. So, when you, if you guys are on Zoom, you will hear a higher Barnett say that Muskogee sound. And this is what she's talking about. It's the sound of our alphabet. So, the C is at the G, the A is at the R, G, R, G, A, G, E. G A G O G U T I. So remember, these are the sounds that we're going to be getting. So you heard how each one of them sounds by themselves. So when you put it together, um, you will it will change a little bit. So what Mahai Barnett and how I've learned is if you need to practice your sounds, you know. And there is recording online that I have put out there before to show you, and that you can hear it. You can see it, you can hear it, and you can um, say it so you remember the sounds. So when you make some of these words, you've already said it when you start doing these exercises. And one thing about um, language is it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. And so, you know, I encourage anybody, those online as well, to go through the Google Drive, read some of the things. And I try to put all of our speakers on there so you can hear what we we're trying to attain. We're trying to sound like that. Oh, I'm in your way, just let me know. Oh, you had a All right. So. And this is what you guys are talking about. Here's the two letter solos. And um, the, I will go with this one now. Ne, 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 no, no, no. So that gets your mouth ready to go. That gets your, your mind and brain and your mouth connection together. And one of the things I tell my, my uh, learners is sometimes you can hear it in your head. You can read it, but then when you speak it, it does not come out correctly. So this is, you know, your mouth is like, your, your tongue and your mouth is like English. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so it takes a brain, mouth connection, eye connection. It's almost like, you know, when you're playing a, uh, a sport, you have to, if somebody's throwing you a ball, you have to have that reaction to catch it, catch it correctly. <laughs> Sometimes timing is off and it hits you in the head. <laughs> Dodgeball. <laughs> so, same thing with your mouth. You've got to get your mouth on practice. So, there's two letters, there's also three letters. And that's a high part. And we talk about this. She even goes through these sometimes because, you know, we're surrounded by English and our minds just refers back to English really easy. But sometimes, even just a few of these lines will get your eyes and your mouth. Ready to speak Muscogee and to kind of switch your brain from English to, you know, to the Muscogee mind. All right, so let's see. Let's go ahead and do the top one. Stop. Stay. D. Stay. Two. All right. And uh, these are just little exercises for you guys to practice. Like I said, I have it on. I think it was module one when we went over this. I have that on there. So you guys can go any time of night, go into the Google Drive. You can hear it. You can hear it being spoken. And I see you'll remember the sounds of it. I know when I, was, when I was learning these, they would speak it in class. We didn't have an audio to go to. So I'm over here for a writing like job. <laughs> And I would write J A W, John. <laughs> that was a sound that I could remember. You know, that helps you do that right in your notes. All right. Since we have a few new students here today, I'm just going to go over this briefly again. Let's go eat words. And so when I went through college and I learned 
you know, the Muscogee language through um, through college. I did not, I was not able to grow up with it, so I couldn't understand the sounds because I didn't hear it very often. So when when they were showing us the the um, alphabet, they would use the Muscogee words. If you don't know how to say the Muscogee words, you don't know what sound you're looking for. That's why I put it to English when we did it in the beginning, like oh, la, oh my, you can hear the ah. And for those, you know, once you start getting more proficient of knowing what you're saying and hearing it, you go off, off, but And you see that I have it broken down. And if anybody asks you to spell it out in the Scobie sound, ah, uh, uh, she, <laughs> and you see that these are some of my notes. And if these don't work for you, use your own. Ah, uh, but she, she's happy. And uh, like I, I tell everybody, when I teach you guys something, I want you to know what you're saying. <laughs> so, you know, somebody can't say, you know, hey, it means this, it means that. And funny story, everybody's done this, so no judging. <laughs> you always have somebody who's saying, hey, give me an Indian name. <laughs> you know, I know we've all had that. Give me an Indian name and just, you know, a native humor. You say, oh, okay, let's see, hmm, let's name you Bumby, <laughs> <laughs> which means uh, state. <laughs> so, it, so it means state, and so like, let's name you Bumby, and I'm like, oh, okay, Bumby, yay, <laughs> what's that mean? Sometimes it means brave boiders. <laughs> so you're walking around, you're going to class, hey, Bumby, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> the funny thing is, when, when this was done, it was in a different state, and there was there weren't any Muscogee that I know of. So I just I just chuckled, you know. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, one of my children did that in, in her school, and she's like, "Mama, I just," she said, "I couldn't carry it off." She goes, I, "Every time I say, hey, Muscogee," and then like. She said, I would start laughing. <laughs> so they do something. <laughs> but you know, these are uh, these are some of the stories that come of you know learning or knowing this code. But here again, Jitsi is, is uh, for the C, Ido, for E, and that's where I was saying my grandchild was Ido, Ido, because you'll see it, you know, when we're in the car, Ido, Ido. And uh, I encourage everybody to, you know, get your children involved, grandchildren involved, and they will learn through you, if not just a few words. You know, um, my child, my grandchild goes, Otomy Hefty, you know, white car, Otomy Lusty, black cars. She knows it. She's three. So I'm excited because she knows all, she knows a lot more than I did when I was three. She knows uh, her English words, English alphabet, English numbers, Muscogee alphabet, Muscogee numbers, because we had the uh, YouTube playing for her while she was playing in her room. And kids are awesome. They're just like, whoop, soak it up. And they remember, you know, your grandma says, hey, I'll give you a cookie if you sit down. Hey, hey, go ahead and sign in and grab you a packet right here. So, and, um, so she remembers, and you know, Grandma says, "Hey, I'm gonna give you a cookie." You know, after we do laundry, you know, you're just holding the last one. Where's my cookie? <laughs> <laughs> but they are like little sponges, and they absorb everything. So I encourage you to, you know, share these words and, and everything with your grandchildren or your children. But this is all out there as well. Like I said, we uh, this is in a Google Drive. You can look that over, and this is. Things you guys already know because we've already gone over this. Let me go ahead. Yeah, Jesus. Remember, this is how we conjugate it. And how many people remember this one? Okay. Tell me, which, is it first, second, or third person? And tell me why. Okay, go ahead. All right. So it is first person. that I am. Because it has the eye. So right here, 
when I when I teach, I try to break it down. So when we conjugate it, we know being is right here. I am. So now, if you say e base, then people know, you know, you know what you're saying. If you go up to one of the speakers and I've not done some new things, you know, because I'm still learning as well. It's like, what does this say? You know, and if it's home base, you just go to one speaker and they're like, oh, eating. You go to another speaker. Oh, it's saying you're eating. Oh, it's talking about eating. You know, you go to three different people. So now the cool thing is, you know, eating, I am, I am eating. All right? So that's why I like to teach the way I learned and, and the way I was taught, because it makes sense to me. I know for a lot of the speakers and uh, um, other people who learn the different way, it, just, it doesn't make sense. But I encourage everybody to listen and to think about it. And if it doesn't make sense, then just block out the part that doesn't make sense and you knew it a different way. Learn that way. Hey, welcome. Lori, recognize you. <laughs> All right, so we're just basically going over stuff I went today before I presented this. All right, this is the this is a student we have online, and, and um, I just wanted to um, introduce Thor. I know he's you traveled a little ways to get here, <laughs> but this is our in person class. Oh, all right. So, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so we have all different. Um, um, language uh, speaking people. Some of us are new, some of us know a little bit more, and some of us know a lot more. So, welcome home. All right. So, these are some of the things I went over today. And let me see. This one. Can anybody tell me what first is? First, second, or third? And why? Okay. Second. It's that That's what we had uh, conjugated from to learn. So after we conjugated, you can see this part is learning. Then is your person mark for you and then R. Learning you R. So that's what it looks like right there. She's learning you are, you are learning. Right? So one of the things that um, when we do our um, conjugation from top to bottom, just like uh, right here, this is the verb stem right here, the black part. So you know, we like get to that and And then you know your it because that second person oh. is he sits kiss. So that's that is also a way for you guys to learn to speak it is um, when we uh, conjugate it, break it down. That's a different way to learn. Or you can just put a you know, just break it up into syllables. He right there, you would put a mark here and then fit. Put a mark here and then kiss. He did kiss. All right. Okay. So, and one more from our gold ones. Right there. Is that first, second, or third? And why? Okay. And why? How do we know that the third person? The third person, well, because it doesn't have an eye of it. It doesn't have an eye of it. Remember, it doesn't have an eye of it, so it's third person. And let me show you here. And this right here is my placeholder, the open and close parentheses. Remember, that's to, when we conjugate, I put that in there so I know not to skip a, um, a step. So it's it's get up, it's to drink. So this is what we call it. It's he's drinking right here in the parentheses, open and close parentheses, she, he, it, or they. I chose he, you can chose she, you can chose it, or you can put they, is. Okay, he is. He 
Drinking he is, he is drinking. You can put drinking she is, drinking it is, drinking they are. Remember, this means am, are, is. All right. Right. This is since we had conjugated, since we've been going through this, we've just been doing a small portion of our conjugation. And there's a lot more. <laughs> but this one, yes, it can be conjugated that way. Yeah. Like I will do something, I will not do something or going to. So like I said, language is a lifetime of learning, and what I'm showing you, I try to spread it out so we can remember, you know, and not go too fast. I know I've been in some classes where I was like, you know, I was just starting to get it, and then they went to something else. And then I was like, wow, okay, then I was just starting to get that, and then they went to something else. I go really slow, so it's a lot of repetition. All right, so this is um, what we had gone over. And I don't have the printout for this, but let's go ahead and sing our song. I'm going to do the <laughs> Let's sing our song. And those of you online, just sing the song as well. Hopefully, everything works. I have everything working where both of us can hear. Sometimes it goes where I can't hear it. Now we will get into Condor 4, which we started today. And um, you should have handouts. Handouts. Let's go to the handouts. And I know I made it pretty because I like to do it, like I said. <laughs> Future one tense. Future one tense shows that someone is going to do something. So last no, mantra, we were not no, going to do something. So this mantra, we are going to do something. Right, there's no L rating in future one tense. You have to change rules. You drop your ETP. You add the tense marker on I'm going to. You add your person marker. I, it's for nothing. And you, you add your declarative ending S for ES, being and R is. All right. So that sounds familiar because we've been doing our steps. Anybody have any questions for the next one? All right. Anybody online have any questions? No? Okay. All right. So here is the template. I know I've uh, told you guys my uh, bleeding heart story. <laughs> This would have made it a lot easier when I was learning all this stuff. But all of this, these templates I had made from all of my notes and when we did our steps. So this will help you guys you know, put it in your folders, keep a copy of it to uh, plug and play. I started putting right here at the top um, the module that we're in because I know sometimes things get mixed up and we'll know where these 
So inner polar. So mod of one, B one plus plus two, or something that's class three, yeah, class one. Sometimes there will be stuff in class three, but not always. So like, like I said, think it up. To eat, you drop your you put one bit right here to eat, you drop your ETP, you get your carb standards, and the HOM people. Now, L grading, you add your ahan, which is your tense marker, which means going to. Ahan means going to. You drop that down, so it'll be ahan, you add the person marker, ahan, right here. So each step adds something new. Drop all that down, on, uh -huh, by, and then you add your S. Remember the S means am, are, is. Um, uh -huh, is. Um, uh -huh, is. So you add your picture verb stem there, um, you got your uh -huh, and then you have um, uh -huh, is. You know what each part of the sentence means now. And that, like I said, I always like to know what I'm saying. <laughs> And what people are calling me, you know, I know what pumpkin means. <laughs> All right. So you got your first one up on. And like I said, I color code it so it makes it easier. Going to I is the first word for I and this. The AMR is Pumpahanes. I am Pumpahanes. I am going to eat. All right. So these are plug and play templates that I made. And you know, I could actually go to somebody's college and hey, I got a little cheat sheet for you. <laughs> Five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it still save you a lot of tears. <laughs> now, what is it called? Cliff notes. They have a little piece Not that I know what this means, but, <laughs> but now they've got the AI. You know, so that's kind of scary. But anyway. But you know, helpful in some ways, scary in others. I had put in here just like I always do. I kind of shot it back to him. No L grading. What is that? In module one, we did L grading. I am doing some. But in the modules after that, we have had no L grading. Um, so module one is I am doing something. I, um, I know it's always I. No, sometimes for for the first person it's I or um, an I or a B, depending. <clears throat> and like I said, I'm teaching you the way I learn. I learned academically, not by the speakers. You can ask the speakers. Sometimes they're interchangeable, the I and the up. Yeah, but like I said, I'm teaching you how I learn, and it makes sense to me. And sometimes, you know the. Uh, the dictionary that you know, the Greek dictionary, it doesn't have all of these things in it. It's only about that big, and there are things that are not in the dictionary. Also, in the, that book that I showed you guys for the grammar, I was told that there's a lot of things in there that are correct, but a lot of them in there that not everybody agrees with. You know, and um, we have to see who wrote it. Were they native? Were they a speaker? Their view and their writing is going to be different from a native who's a speaker. And then again, where did the speaker reside? Did they reside in the Eufaula area? Did they reside more close Tulsa? Did they reside in Woka? You know, regional, regional sounds. And uh, I know one of the things that I, I talk about is like Ifa and Ifa for dog. I've heard both. And I've heard. People come up to me and say, Well, you said Iva. I learned Iva. I said, That's how you learn it. That's how you remember it. Say it. I'm not going to say anybody's wrong. Do you have a question? Um, in, with her question, um, you were saying it's either a, to sit and still be with A or an up that it would be um, about it would be there if you had uh, L grade. Or L grade is. Um, I can, I can go back to that. Well, you don't want to. No, no, no. I mean, they don't know somebody's problem. I know a lot of people who are like, I think it's a very So let's go to it and I will tell you. Okay. This is done from module one. And for some reason, in module one, you know, we're talking about I know something. 
If you have a few seconds to find it, um, not to the Do you see 
the, the A was one mark, the I was one mark, the O was one mark, the E was one mark. <clears throat> As a person marker, I gets for nothing. Person marker show who's doing an action. I is the first person who I gets to the second person who's you. Third person does not have a marker, so at that time I represented it by a zero with a line through it. Right now I've been doing open and close parentheses because it shows she, he, and her they. But I read my notes. No person marker means the third person. Like I said, this is just my placeholder when I do my notes. And the third person translated literal English from she, he, and they in the singular and it. They can also mean. Many, but we're using just in this, when we were doing this, it was just me singular. So they are doing this. Where's grandma? You know, she, she's over there. Um, they are in the horse my points. They are, they are cooking. They're cooking primary. So it's just for grandma. It's just singular. And then, as a third ending, S or E, and the third endings, and also are also the periods. And the reason why I put it in capitals because I kept getting marked for it. <laughs> Not putting period, they also mean and markers. All right, let's see if we can go to the other one. All So that is L grading, and that comes from the Muskogee Creek Senate Structure Book, um, the black book that I brought before. I don't have it today, but that's where that comes out. And the reasoning and why they do this, I couldn't tell you. That's how I learned to do I am doing something. But uh, like I said, we get things in and out of that book, but at the same time, we don't always go by the book. That's all I can tell you. I don't know how to explain it if you have any, any different proceedings. Let's Right. So let me try to give an example of L grade. Let's see. This is also, you know, like I said, you can plug and play into this. You can teach it up to see step by step. You drop the verb, you drop the ETV, you get your verb stamp. And this is where you L grade. And I don't have the, uh, the rules that I just showed you. But this is what it's talking about. The last vowel has a long run with it. E to that. E to that. It's got the long E to that. It's the final vowel. That's what it's talking about, L grade. So I know we talked about um, the high barnet, talks about the tones and how you can change the tones and change the meaning of things. I'm guessing that this is how people know, you know, that you're talking about. What you're doing now in the present, each of them. Because it's got a long E over it. Like I said, sometimes we work in the book and sometimes I just work with um with the speakers. You know, we go back and forth. And also the colleges do that as well. So you hear one thing in one college and another because our language was not written down. <laughs> and different people are trying to explain how we learn or how to teach. Go ahead. Well, when you're talking about that, that first vowel of E, the main thing that you meant is the E. Does that mean that if you're in present tense, the right way to say it would be to say, I speak with you, E did this instead of E did That's what I understand. That's what I understand. That's so what I understand. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not the E. Got the long E, that's where it changes. Yes. And uh, one of the other ones, um, IS, I, I, to go, right. it changes the, the V to an A. 
itis. That's how you get there. And, and that's the one I was wanting to show you. Yeah, I don't know exactly where it is. <laughs> so, you know, it's like I said, I'm still learning, so I'm trying to put all of these things together in my head as well as to learn and then share with you guys. Does anybody have any more questions? Let me just finish this one and then we'll go back to um, to uh, model four. But that's what it's talking about L grading. It's a long mark over the beam. I know it's confusing, I know, I know. But once you stick with it and you just keep going, it'll start making sense. And like I tell you know, all the learners, is stick with it. I know sometimes you're like, dang, I'm just up to here and learning and, and just like seem like you're so cool. But uh, just listen, because your mind will, you know, because I'm just going to give an example. I'm not going to say who did it, but, you know. <laughs> About 45 minutes into the lesson, because we were going every day, 45 minutes, minutes into the lesson, I'm like, dang, what am I going to eat for lunch? <laughs> what am I going to cook? You know, dang, I need to run to make sure I don't get a ticket because I only have so many quarters of meter. So I'm thinking of all of this. She's still teaching. My mind is still hearing what she's saying. And uh, like I said, my, my brain just kind of switched channel. And then later on that day, I was like, oh, she did say this. My mind just like switched back and said, oh, I remember she did say this. So our minds are awesome. And they like to, uh, I don't know about men's minds. I, I can only speak from experience, but women's minds like multitask. You know, I got to pick up diapers. I got to do this. I got to do the laundry. I got to cook. The women's minds, and I have my, my husband, when we were talking and he goes, Dang, because we're talking about something, and then my mind switches channels, and I start talking this about the balance. It's like, wait, did she just switch channels on me? I'm like, I did. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the cool husband will pick up on your little cues after years, you know, he's been married 30 some years. So let's pick it, he'll pick up on little clues, but that's how a woman's mind works. For those of you who don't know, <laughs> we'll switch channels. Sometimes there's some things we don't want to hear, so we switch channels and we'll start thinking about that mountain. <laughs> but, uh, all right. All right, so that's where you get the, the uh, that's what it's talking about upgrading. You put the mark over And we don't do that very often, except for from what I understand is this one is how I learned it. I didn't get to go to Creek 2 class. Um, they kept canceling it, but this is how I learned it from one of the colleges. And then you add your person marker again, I. Because we're talking about I's first person and an S. Camp R is, and it also means a period, that part of the period there. <laughs> um, I don't do it in all my stuff, but I showed it to you. Each is A, A, P, EJs, EJs. Verb stem, person marker, declarative ending. And the declarative ending means, you know, you can use Camp R or is. That's why all three are there. Because, you know, whatever you're talking about, you can talk about and art is, and it's not only in first, but it's also in the second and third person that it, the S means and art is. That's why I said the period of the is Aegis. Aegis. So you went from to C to I and C. Right? And that's where the L grading, I know people always ask, but I'm like, it's in my mind. But uh, that's where it comes from. And that was also taken like the Muskogee Creek Senate structure from that blackboard. I've seen it there. And I asked another one time, because you know, we all learned differently in learning the Muskogee language. I asked her, and she, she learned a lot of academically what I did. And she was telling me, yeah, she's seen that before. And you know, like I said, it's not, everybody doesn't know this, but. There are people who do. We do it a different way. I know I've seen, um, I also reviewed when I I was hired over there, also reviewed a lot of the uh, previous teachers from other the previous time. And they would just say, drop the ETB and add the VS, us, and then the command. Well, that's cool and everything, but that to me, it doesn't show you what each part of it means. You know, but you know it's a command, eat, you know, or drink or run, 
But I, I always like to know the breakdown of everything, and, and um, a lot of our, well, I just speak now, learn from absorption from uh, from childhood. And I want to put this in there in utero. Babies can hear their language spoken. So, you know, even even expecting people, even expecting to moms, you're, you're training your child to understand scope language. And I always like to say there's power in our scope language and there's power in our words. So I encourage everybody to, to get what they know, take it outside, go for a walk, and talk to whatever it is and address it by the Muskogee name. And you will see that there's connection there that you can't get in English. You know, and, you, and I like to tell the story. I was running, that was hot. This is before I knew the words for, for Muskogee things. And I would just have an appreciation. Thank you, son, because it's hot. I love the heat. I'm solar powered. <laughs> you know, um, it makes me feel good to be in. So not this hot. <laughs> <laughs> this hot makes me think of chocolate, so I'm walking and I'm mouthing. <laughs> and I did tell somebody the other day when we were walking out of the office, oh my gosh, chocolate and milk and they eat. And I just started hearing <laughs> But, uh, you know, we were running and I said, well, thank you, Ken, for, you know, we did a good start long, and I said, I really needed that. So, and that's all the word that I knew at the time was, but oh, thank you, Wim, for freeze. And then I, I got to the point where I was running, the wind quit, I was running, like, and it was like, son, I love you, and thank you for your, for your, you know, um, your heat, and for, for the light, I love you, but when can you pick it up a little bit? Because <laughs> I was running, and then, long before, Big old gusts of wind would start coming. I'm not saying every time, but for the majority of the time, I was talking to the wind and it would blow. And I would say, thank you. But oh, but oh, that was the only word I knew at the time. Now we can say, okay, the wind, hopefully, hopefully, you know, but oh, you know, you're outside, you're walking around the neighborhood, hopefully, but oh, you know, wind, thank you. You know, it oh, but oh, for this shade. You know, so just say these little things, get into the mindset. Feel the, the words here. Because we have, our people always had a connection with our Mother Earth. And through the time, and we all know what happened through all this time, our connections, we're trying to get our connections back. And through our language and our culture, you know, you can feel it. Anyway, I encourage everybody to uh, speak the language, think the language, listen to the, uh, the sounds. And uh, go to a stop sign, C, D, O, T, you know, and then just just keep practicing. So, like I said, I showed you the template here. And that's what we're going to be uh, doing for Model 4. I will throw more things on there because the majority of us already know steps. And you guys understand the concept of the steps that I show you guys. You guys are catching on really fast. And it's exciting to see and to hear even, you know, just introduction. Like this more at this point. Well ago, oh, introduction. <clears throat> you know, stongo, exchange. And you know, somebody said that stone gets you know. So um, even even sometimes I know what I'm supposed to say. My mind's like, oh my gosh, I just spoke to me. Like, I'm so excited. And then they're, they're just like, oh, hang And then they walk off. And by the time I'm like, wait, you <laughs> So it takes practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, you know, I was talking to uh, Philip, and he says, he says, but no, you know, we go to 7 Eleven, grab some. No, I, I can open up the extras, but oh, thank you. And they're like, oh, you can help them. just little things like that. And you know, you can you can either say English afterwards or no, just practice. But oh, how many times do you say thank you? Or, you know, or you're welcome. Inga, welcome. So just practice these little things. And that little thing gets you going forward in your language journey. 
All right, so let's go ahead and briefly go over these. Like I said, I'd like to show you the plug and play of how we can do our infinitive verbs. I haven't gotten our new infinitive verbs, so these are old infinitive verbs, model one, two, and three. And I didn't I didn't uh, print any uh, infinitive verbs to, to hand out, but the fun of that, to dance. The fun of that. You drop your ETV and get your verb stamp, the fun. Open, open, So, like I said, in the sets, we just go down and we add and we add and we add. And a lot of things that I was laughing about is I like to teach the long math. <laughs> so, I refer to this, sometimes you'll hear me refer to this as long math. And then once we learn the long math, we can go shorten it because we've already learned the sets. Okay? So, long math and long conjugation. And later on in our class, I will show you short test and short meta, but you know now what each part of the conjugation means. So you have a little bit more knowledge than some of us do because we just learned, oh, this means this. Now it's like, dang, that's not what it means. <laughs> All right, so right here, you add your upon, only two, what you said, future tense. One upon, you add your person marker, I. One up on the declared in. So that so going through our steps, we went from to dance, conjugated each part of it. One up on it. One up on it. Verb scan, going to person marker, the MR is. One up on it. I am going to dance. Because we're talking about I right there. I am going to dance. Okay. Right here, and this is where you put your hands for this, this S. I am going to dance. On that one. On Remember the I like they say I know I have to remind myself. Got a question? No? Okay. And like I said, I'll show you guys, you know, um, different examples because we need to see it over and over and over again. That's how we learn. Same thing, same process. To work. I don't know. This seems to be work, not dance. <laughs> Scratch that out. <laughs> and so you uh, get your work soon. You drop your PTP. No L rating, that's for the L rating we were talking about. That's why I put it in there. Because sometimes when people remember something, and I just want to say, there's no L rating in here, so we're not going to put the long markers or anything. That's why that's in there. And now we know what L rating is. The dot got on, going to the future tense. The dot got on in A. You have your person marker A. The dot got on A, next, the dot got on next. So that's declared in meaning, which is am, are, is, and don't come on is. Verb stem, per, uh, going to, person marker, and then am, are, is. Don't come on is. I am going to be. Right. Right. Or, right. You're right. That needs to be work. Scratch it out until work. I am going to work. Hi. Uh huh. The, uh, that L grade is on the last vowel of the stem. The last, yes. The last, last vowel of the stem. So with the don't get out of you have two syllables of stem, I don't even And with did, did you know, you just have that one, two, that just that one, that one syllable. Yeah. 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 I know I get things, uh, sometimes I'm like, you know, I don't quite understand, but I try to present it to everybody the way I understand it and um, why it only does it on that one, why there's no celebration on that one. I don't, you know, I know it's in the book, it's referenced in the book. I don't know. So, Johnny likes to do things a little different. I mean, to make. I then you drop your ETV, get your verb stamp, no L rating. I upon going to, you your future tense marker, 